Hey, hope everyone is doing well. Uh, sorry, it's been a while since the last video. I've just been kind of busy, but hopefully this one uh, shows you guys a lot of cool stuff that you can use for a lot of different things UI-wise. Uh, or maybe even in-game if you have some moving textures. Uh, so let's just hit play really quickly and show you the effect we're creating down in the bottom right. That is the type of circle gauge uh, we'll cover making. And I'll show you guys how to set it up so you can change the color as well as that value of how full it is uh, in a material instance. Uh, so if you have a texture of your own, go ahead and import that. If not, you can download the one we're using in this example. Uh, the downloads under the video. So I'm just going to go ahead and import that really quickly. And you'll see it's just this opacity mask looking texture. Uh, and let's just go ahead and right click and create a new material. And we'll just call this uh, circle, or let's just call it gauge material. Uh, and once we've got that, let's go ahead and open that up. And let's drag that texture sample in there. All right. So now we've got this, let's actually set this material up to be used for UI. Uh, so let's click on it, and then let's set this material domain to user interface, uh, and we'll set the blend mode to translucent. That way we have access to this opacity channel. Uh, so now let's go ahead and use uh, what's called a vector parameter to drive the color of this. So let's right click, do vector parameter, awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and rename this too so we don't get too confused or lost later on. Um, let's just call this color. Oops. Uh, and once we've got that, I'm just going to make this something really easy to see, uh, like blue, or let's just use red really quickly. Kind of orange, I guess. Uh, and let's just do a multiply to kind of blend these two. Uh, and you'll see this output we're getting is kind of this orange ring. Uh, but we're not plugging this into the final color quite yet. We're going to do one more multiply. And we're going to leave this B value kind of empty for now. Uh, and next, what we're going to do is set up all the math required to uh, create that cool radial effect we got going on. Uh, so I'm just move over a little to the left to give us some room. And the first node we're going to need is a texture coordinate. Uh, and what I'm going to do is off of this use a custom rotator. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is because this is going to let the start of this gauge uh, be the left side instead of the right side by default. So that's why we're rotating this. Uh, so the rotation center is asking for this uh, vector2 parameter. We're just going to do a vector2 constant. Uh, plug that in. And for these values, we're going to use 0.5 and 0.5. Whoops. What that'll do is that'll give us the center of this texture to rotate from. Uh, and we'll visualize this a uh, little bit further down in this chain. Uh, next, we're going to want to use a constant for this rotation angle. Plug that in, and we're going to use a value of 0.5 for this. I believe. I think so. We'll come back and check if we need to. Uh, so once we've got this and everything's all rotated, we're going to go ahead and drag this out and do an add node. And if we set up everything correctly and roll out this texture coordinate channel, it should be flipped in this add node. Oh, all white, or all yellow, sorry. Uh, next, what we're going to need to do is, let's just actually copy this constant really quickly. Plug this into B. Uh, and this value, we're going to actually make negative 0.5. Uh, and we're going to need to save that. And if this isn't updating, uh, you can just collapse it and roll it back out. And this is what this result should be looking like. So using the center of this texture coordinate as kind of the center of our radial point, it's going to be drawing from right here on this left side. Uh, so if we weren't to do this, we were just to go ahead and add in without doing this custom rotator, uh, you'll see this is kind of flipped and it would start the drawing on the right side. And I'll show you guys a little later what that would look like. Uh, so after we're adding this, uh, let's go ahead and delete those for no more confusion. Let's go ahead and pull out this vector to radial value. And the only node we're going to use here is this vector converted to angle. So we're going to drag off this, and we're just going to do this add node. So, uh, And once we've done this, this is where we're going to use a, another parameter that we can use in our material instance to kind of drive how full this gauge is. Uh, so we're going to right click, and we're going to create a scalar parameter. 
Uh, and before we get too far, I'm gonna rename this and just call this like circle percent or let's just call it gauge percent actually, since that's kind of what I'm doing. Gauge percent. Hope I'm saying gauge right. Uh, and plug that into this B channel. Uh, so now by default, you'll see we get kind of this white to black gradation, uh, obviously in this kind of radial pattern from the center here. Uh, so if we type in a different value for this default uh, and hit save, you won't really notice too much of a change in this uh, node right here. It got a little brighter, but again, that's not really the effect we're going for. Uh, so what we're going to do is after this node, we're going to do what's called a floor. What that'll do is that'll just turn every in-between value to a hard value in between that. So if you're using 0.5, you'll see that this gauge gets cut off right in the middle. And if we change this gauge to percent to something like 0.25, which is a quarter of this, you'll see it cuts that off at its quarter uh, from that center. So that's really cool. That's essentially this rotational effect we got that we want. Uh, so let me move this over just a little bit also. Uh, so once we're done with this effect, this is what we want to plug into that uh, open multiply node we had over here. So we're going to plug this in, and you'll see it's now cutting off the circle uh, based on this gauge percent value. So that's essentially what we want for our final color. Next, what we're going to do is take this opacity mask texture sample. We're going to plug that into opacity. And what that'll do is that'll just give us this kind of a background to look at. Uh, so that's our really basic material setup going on. I'll scrub through this so you guys can go through that and pause at each section if you need to. Uh, and then the two things we can control are this vector parameter and this scalar parameter right here. Uh, so we can close that and then let's just go ahead and go back to our content browser. Let's right click this gauge material and create a material instance on that. All right, so once that was created, uh, we can double click this, and now you'll see we can enable both of these parameters that we want. Uh, and we can change this gauge percent at real time, which is really useful, this is exactly what we want. Uh, you'll also notice that this value is not true percentage, it's between zero and one, so we'll have to do a little math later on to get that. Uh, but we can also change this color uh, at real time, so that's also pretty nifty. Uh, so I'm just gonna set this gauge percent to zero by default uh, and you'll see why I add in a little bit but what we want is that material instance of this so once we've got that let's go ahead and create a user interface widget that we can put this on so if you have a HUD already you can just add this onto it if not uh, let's just right click create a new widget blueprint and I'll just call this like gauge widget or something uh, so once we've got this opened let me make that a little bigger uh, this is really easy to do. We're just going to drag an image out into our widget box. I'm going to anchor this to the bottom right because that's where I want this for this example. Uh, and all we have to do is in this appearance section, set this brush image to that instance. So I'm just going to type, uh, let's do gauge. Uh, let's see, we want gauge material instance. What did I call it? Yeah, gauge material instance. Uh, so once we've got that, you'll see it's being drawn like really squished down here. Uh, and by default, you may want to try to change this image size right here. And that's not going to do anything for the way we have this set up. Uh, it will change it if you have this tie link set to something, right? If we have it set to both, you'll see changing this image size changes the amount of tiles. Uh, but if we don't have any tile links, image size doesn't actually do anything for us. So what you want to do is change this X and Y value uh, to be, since this is a square resolution image, uh, some kind of square value. So I'm using 256 by 256. Uh, and then something else we want to do just to make it easier on ourselves is rename this image to something like gauge image. Uh, if you don't rename it and you have a lot of HUD elements, it could get kind of confusing to have like image 258 or something on there. So just rename this to gauge image. Uh, and once we've got that set up, that's all we need for now. Let's go set this up in our player controller. Uh, so where you draw your HUD is up to you. Uh, if you watch my other UI videos, you'll know why we do it in the player controller. Or why I like to anyway. Uh, so with this begin play, let's go ahead and create a new widget. Uh, and I'm just doing this for the sake of completeness. If you already know how to draw all this, then uh, just sorry for the delay. Stick around for a little bit. Uh, let's just do this gauge widget. Uh, let's return value, promote to variable. We'll call this gauge reference. 
I guess I can delete these other widget references that I don't need anymore. All right, once we've got this, don't forget to add to viewport. Otherwise, you may not see this. Uh, and then let's just give us some kind of buttons that are going to let us access values. So let's just do like an M press and an N press or whatever keys you want for testing purposes. Uh, but like I said, changing this value, you could change this in your character and do a cast or an interface call to get it in your player controller or your character game mode, wherever you're getting this value from. Uh, you'll need access to it wherever you're setting this UI. Uh, so I'm just going to use this float I have right here called temporary HP. Uh, and when I press M, what I want to have happen is I want temp HP uh, to go up by 10. And we're going to want to send it, set it after I've gone up by 10. Uh, and then this is where all the cool stuff comes into play. We're going to get a reference to that uh, UI widget that we've set. And we're going to, once we have that, we're going to get uh, that gauge image. So, right, this is where renaming comes in useful. We're going to get this gauge image, and we're referencing that actual image in our widget. And we're going to do something called get dynamic material. Make sure your execution pins are plugged in. And off this return value, this is where we can set all sorts of parameters. So if we open up uh, that material instance one more time really quickly, uh, you'll see we have a vector parameter called color and a scalar parameter called gauge percent. Uh, so let's just do both really quickly. So off this return value of get dynamic material, let's go ahead and do something called set, and then we'll do our scalar parameter first because that's the important one. Uh, and then this parameter name needs to be the same as this right here. So we have gauge percent is what we want to call this. Gauge percent. Uh, and then the value we're going to be using to drive this is actually that temp HP variable. So let's go ahead and just plug that into there. Uh, and now we can also do a set vector parameter if we want to. Uh, like I said, it's not really needed, but let's just do a rewrap mode really quickly. Uh, and then this parameter name uh, it was pretty simple. We called it color. So that was nice. And then we'll just change it to something pretty drastically different, like this awful green. But who knows? Maybe you like it. Maybe it looks awesome. Uh, so that's what happens when we press M. We go up by 10. Oh, one more thing. We need the math. Remember. Uh, remember, the scalar parameter takes values from 0 to 1. And in my mind, this temp HP is going to be between 0 and 100. Or for maybe gameplay purposes, your character has 500. So remember, you have to do this division correctly. So we're going to do this division, and since in my mind it's between 0 and 100, I'm just going to divide it by 100 to get that fractional value. Uh, so once we've got that, let's go ahead and compile and test this really quickly. So now when we press M, it should be filling up. Awesome. Uh, now let's go ahead and give us that uh, M press so that it goes back down. We can kind of do some testing there. Uh, let's just drag all this out, copy and paste it really quickly. Uh, and instead of adding right here, let's just go ahead and do a quick subtraction. Boom, boom, and then just, let's just change this color really quickly to show that it can be done. Something like purple. And I don't know why you would want to change materials when health is going up or down. Maybe you want it to flash and then change back. I don't know, but it's there. It's really cool. We press M, it goes up. We press N, it goes back down. Maybe you could use it, change it to show a status effect or something if it's a health bar. I don't know whatever you're using this for. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Uh, if you found that useful, awesome. If not, stick around for a couple more minutes. I'll show you how to mask out that background and maybe do some other cool stuff uh, and show you why that custom rotator is there in the material. Uh, so let's open up that gauge material really quickly. Uh, so you'll notice in the first example I showed, I actually was masking out that background. So. Uh, that little black circle isn't actually there. Uh, to do that, super simple, we're just going to take this opacity uh, texture that we're using. We're going to do a multiply off of this. And before it hits its opacity channel, we want to multiply it by that cool little circle gradient mask stuff that we're doing. And then plug that into opacity. So it's only masking off the exact same section that is color filled. Uh, so right now, it's just filling up without the background. Uh, so maybe you want that kind of effect, maybe not. That's how you would achieve that pretty simple change. Uh, play around with nodes, see what happens in here. Uh, let's go back to this. And again, this is where that custom rotator came in. 
uh, that I showed earlier. Hopefully it didn't cause too much confusion. But I'm doing this because I just like reading left to right. If for some reason you want your gauge to start on the right side of the gauge, you would just skip this custom rotator step, go straight into the add node. Uh, and again, this is in the full material, not the instance. And if you hit play now, you'll see it fills up from the right side instead of the left. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, that's it for all the cool little material tricks. Uh, I don't really need those, so I'm just going to hook it in the old way and save that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. found a bunch of useful things. Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. I'll try to get back to you guys as fast as possible. If not, stick around for the next video. Thanks.